Hello there. We're here today with an INTP who's very special because he creates mind-blowing music. I would love for you to listen to, especially uh, if you're interested in learning how cognitive functions can relate to creating music. Hello, hello to you. When I saw your cognitive functions music sketch, I've recommended it in so many of the other interviews I, I have done. <laughs> I, I keep telling people because it was because it was so on point. And, and once I started making this album with the MBTI community, I I had you targeted as someone I wanted involved. You have your second album out, made by Thawing Eyes. MBTI for short. <laughs> That's so smart. Uh, I think we can go about this per cognitive function uh, because you're an INTP who creates music. So let's start with introverted thinking. Uh, how do you see the use of introverted thinking when you create music? Many, many reviews who do not know my cognitive stack have found this introverted thinking at the top of my stack. I go all, all over the place and was listing all the genres I go into, mm -hmm. but there's a, a thread of the author that's, that's through all of them. What? And it seems to be from the outside is that introverted thinking is a regulator on all the cognitive functions underneath. Whereas if extroverted intuition is at the top, you, you might hear a song consist of many different parts yeah. But introverted thinking is making sure that they are all tied into each other. Mm -hmm. it, it brings um, consistency. Like it's like your inner world is structured, but it's your very own yes. structure. I'm using that structure. I'm using motifs in terms of making sure things repeat enough so that you can get a little bit of a handhold on them. That's inferior FE coming in as well in terms of relatability. But it's making sure the thing looks like whatever it is, sounds like whatever it is enough so that you get a clear picture of what it is, even though it might not be something that you have encountered before. That's so interesting because I'm thinking of FI. And so it's also like an introverted judging cognitive function and how FI would play uh, as a dominant cognitive function in producing music. And it would be so different because... <laughs> I, if I doesn't need to find structure, it's just, it's so like freestyle. It's like, this feels right. And of course, in the unconscious, it has a meaning and it is structured to the person. Um, yes, it's, it's authenticity, I think, is what exactly. FI brings yeah. to it. It's expressing the artist, whatever the artist wants to express. And yeah. for an ENFP, that could be a bunch of things at once. Exactly. I, I can see something like um, Bohemian Rhapsody being, yeah. being a song where the musically it goes many different places, yeah. but there is a storyline that is definitely personal to the author. A strange story, but a very personal one. Yeah. And I, I think that's where NE and FI converge. Yeah. Where, whereas my, my TI does not care about the lyrical story there much at all. I don't have a particular relation to it. Uh, a lot of my process, I'll, I'll do a, a new sound for as long as I think it can go before it gets boring. And then I think, okay, what do I bring next in sort of an intro extroverted intuition way? But then after that, I'm starting to bring tie-ins to the things that have come before. And mo motifs is a very, very good yeah. word. Because I tend to write a lot of intricate music. I like the word intricate. That, that intricate means at least, you know, there's, there are patterns, it's followable. There is an internal logic with the word intricate. Yeah. Yes, in, <laughs> internal logic is, is very big for, for, for introverted thinking there. I put in a lot of what I call rhythmic hooks. Okay, yeah. So, so that if people, if people cannot follow the melody or the counter melodies or the second or third counter melodies, there is something I am doing rhythmically that people can describe as going, it, it goes, you know, da, 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 da. Cause that's how a lot of people actually process songs as well. I have songs that way too. And that's, that's some, that's some FE coming in, coming in as well. It's super interesting because uh, I was going to ask you also about FE and I didn't think it would be that prominent. It came up like spontaneously to you. Extroverted intuition. You explain a lot of uh, the references 
uh, you made within the songs and all the, I want to say the symbolic <laughs> that spoke to you and that you really wanted to integrate into your music. So you're, you're getting at that the commentary dives into the why behind, yeah. behind the NE, why yeah. these yeah. bits of SI data Meaning. were combined, were combined this way and yeah. not some other way. I, I get into a lot of that. In, in addition to just coming up with a lot of jokes between the explanations. Yeah, it's so playful. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. SI, I think, as opposed to SE, where S, SI really cares a lot about genres, I think, mm -hmm. where it wants the genres to be defined. If you had an SI dom who didn't care for a certain song, mm -hmm. I would expect them to say something like, this isn't proper rock music. This doesn't sound like country music. Yeah. This doesn't sound like that. They'd, they'd be upset that it's not pure, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Extroverted sensing is just fine with the vibe, whatever it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a banger. It's a vibe. Yeah. I like taking those bits of SI reference, uh, like taking something that sounds like a genre over here, then taking a genre that lives at the same tempo and kind of squishing them like like the yin and yang symbol, making just sort of something. Them, yeah, ma making something new with them and sort of twirling them together. Okay. Yeah. In, into something that's really none of the things you can you can pick up on all these different parts that I'm drawing from. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not that my music. You know, you hear artists say, oh, "My music doesn't have a genre," or "My music transcends genres." I actually know that that's that neither of those are true for me. Mm -hmm. It's actually a lot of micro bits of genres put together, quilted, quilted together. Yeah. And the commentary will tell you most of the ones that that I have drawn from. I find so fascinating too that MBTI describes this as well. That what people most know about us is our first extroverted function. They don't see our dominant function necessarily. They see our first extroverted function. Yeah, whatever. it's more visible in the yes. outer world. Yeah. And, and reviewers have time and again picked up on that I'm pulling from a lot of different places yeah. and that you don't know what to expect next, yeah. which I think is just an any dominant conversation. It so is. I'm a fan of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I really see that in their music, even though, like, I don't even know what type they all are, like, individually, uh, but just focusing on their music, and I think other people could relate, like, they would say that it's very extroverted, intuitive music, that's how well, I feel about it, and that might be the reason why I like it so much. The Red Hot Chili Peppers come from a very extroverted intuition music scene, the late 1980s of Los Angeles. This is my SI yeah. dad yeah. and, and yeah. love of music, but we're like yeah. funk and a little bit of metal, but also rapping. It was yeah. just all what people liked doing. So it all came together and nobody, and nobody cared in a SI Dom kind of way, yeah. even though it's, you know, that's important for a lot of different people as they're making things to, to aim for a genre. That's yeah. important for a lot of success. Mm -hmm. But NE showing up above SI says, I take your notions of SI and I laugh at them. <laughs> That's how we like it. <laughs> Very high vocals in Under the Bridge. They sort of come out of nowhere. It's not clear what they're doing there, but it's what a lot of people like about the song, right? <laughs> it's, what, it's what gives it that distinctiveness. It's so specific. Uh, yeah, it, it, it does make it very unique. It's true. And who knows where that thought was coming from. Yeah. But then once it's there, it feels right. Yeah, that's true. And that seems to be so much of uh, everything in your videos from NEFI. It just feels right to go to the next thing. <laughs> that's it. That's my life we're defining right now. Just to get a bit more specific about like the references within the references. For instance, Shadwan is like an island on the 34th meridian. So you did something with the, the beat of this song. It felt right to put it in 34 beats per measure. Mm -hmm. and, and so given that it went kind of in this early 90s ambient house with some psytrance trance elements and a little bit of new age kind of in the way it, it starts out, you have that. I thought when, when you think of 90s dance music, there are 
islands like Ibiza, where, you know, these party European islands that people yeah. know, and, and they become the names of songs uh, very right. often. It, it, well, maybe this should be named for like, like one of those islands, but tying into 34 in some way. That's and Shadwan, cool. Shadwan is just an Egyptian island. Nothing much happens on it, but you can see there are a couple of videos on YouTube of people doing scuba dives and things around it. It looks like a lovely place for being barren and rocky, but uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the most exciting Mediterranean-ish island <laughs> that, you found. that was happening on, on, the, on the 34th. <laughs> I love that. I love those Easter eggs that you put everywhere. Uh, by the way, I really love the chart you came up with about the cognitive functions and how they relate to music. You've already answered my question on introverted sensing. Yeah. I love how you differentiate yourself from everyone who wants to be original, but actually they become really banal <laughs> by saying this. It, it does happen sometimes. And I, I suspect that might be... A, I'm not trying to um, be the psychologist to the world here, <laughs> but I think that can happen <laughs> if, I, I think that can happen if FI is not balanced in the person because they're, they are substituting authenticity for originality. They're conflating the two concepts. That's very, and they, they, they're very related concepts, mm. but they, they are different. So you can have an FI, a song that is very good on FI authenticity yeah. But it might be something very similar to someone else's FI authenticity. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I think that is absolutely fine. Yeah. But that is FI coming to the fore. It's not, it's not anything else. And I've definitely heard that a lot. People, and I was a bit like that as a teenager. I was like, uh, I don't like this band because it's too commercial. Everyone loves them or whatever. <laughs> so that was. Well, I've, I've done that too many times. <laughs> Me trying to be like uh, original and because I felt like it was important to be your own self, true self. But as you just said, you may like a really unoriginal pop song, but it rings super true to you. And that's yes. FI. But that's good. Lean, yeah. lean into it. I, I exactly. think just know that that's the cognitive function you're using as you talk about it, rather than confuse it with the other cognitive functions, because I think that makes for healthier music discussions. Totally. And Do you want to say something about music producing and the other cognitive functions that INTPs don't use? I normally see the cognitive functions from introverted to extroverted as being on a spectrum. And I think of it a lot like the zoom setting on a microscope mm -hmm. that, that the more you zoom in, usually the more introverted you're getting, the more detail you can describe about that at the expense of the bigger picture and vice versa. You mm -hmm. can't look at both at the same time. Yeah. And so I, I see it as just kind of sliders one way or the other to introverted sensing to extroverted sensing and, and, and so on down, down the way. And that it might honestly be more important for us to understand that I'm thinking dominant, you're intuition dominant, and then say that our preference is to extroverted or introverted. Yeah. I think that's how I see it in general as sort of these microscope zoom in, zoom out settings. I, I think for the other, for the other cognitive functions, uh, your extroverted thinking uh, in the, in the sketch hit it very well that in, instead of the kind of unique structure of intro, introverted thinking, extroverted thinking is going to look for those kind of established structures, not necessarily genre, but like the, the mood is something that you can tap into just kind of plug and play to get stuff done, which is how your extroverted thinker, I, I, you know, I stole that from you. Is, is, <laughs> no, but I, is I love there. how you put precise words on what I did. It's so satisfying. <laughs> Well, but I, I was thinking about it, it from the spectrum. Than I would. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's the spectrum thing, right? It's, yes. you know, that the thinking is going to look for what kind of structure this is, but extroverted thinkers dominant are going to look for a structure that already exists. It doesn't have to belong to a genre, mm. but it, ha it has to, it has to be something that's clearly usable in, in that way. Whereas an INTP who is unhealthy I suppose, or just willing to stay in the dominant functions, they might make the most impractical music. Frank James's sketch on 16 personalities as musicians, maybe two years old now. Yeah. The I INTP is the only <laughs> the INTP is the only one without any physical instruments. 
and, and, and then he explains that he has five different time signatures in the same song. It, yeah, extroverted thinkers, like in your sketch, are going to have the most purpose for the music. Mm-hmm. And introverted thinking on the other end, I don't think cares yeah. at, at all by itself. <laughs> It's, it's almost like commercial, commercial viability versus not. That doesn't, that doesn't actually limit the music. A lot of people no. feel like it limits the music, but it doesn't. No, because also I would say like, nobody uses only one cognitive function. Effie will always be there to balance out TI, I say. And, yes. Uh, so, and you spontaneously talked about it at the very beginning when we, we talked about how you use, how introverted thinking plays into when you create music. So yes. yeah, it all makes sense. And, and I, I think as well to make sure I cover all the cognitive functions yeah. uh, in here as well. And I, I think you struggled the most with this one, just my view on the original sketch was introverted intuition. That, that one seemed to be the hardest to pick up on what it was going for. Am, am I correct in, in picking that up from the original? Can I even remember <laughs> what I said? It, it, end, it, ended, yeah. uh, it ended in talking about wacky waving inflatable zoo man or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, oh, yeah, no. So uh, it was like uh, introverted intuition of finding the true meaning behind the song yeah. and then being interrupted by some silly like ad or something. And um yeah, but so many copyrights infringements, so I couldn't was, <laughs> use a proper ad. I've, I've run this kind of through a few people. My wife is an INTJ. I talk with her some. Uh, and I, I think it's easiest to put it on a spectrum if you say that NE is looking for variety, connecting disparate things in new ways. I think NI is looking for definition. And again, that's not the same as being a genre or being being useful in any particular way but that the song is clearly whatever it is. So uh, having a unifying theme, ha- yeah. having something to really tie it together, it doesn't have to be structural in the way that TI is looking for. It can really just be anything. If it's, if it's a silly dance song, that's very it much whatever it is. a really silly dance song. I'm surrounded by NI users. Ashley makes a lot of sense what you're saying. I was seeing it more as yeah. NI finding the true meaning behind, but that's probably like my well, the combination of any and fi <laughs> together. <laughs> but it, it, you're, you're getting at the you're getting at the same thing, honestly, yeah, because the tr- yeah, if you yeah. find the true meaning of something, you're it finding is. out what it really is, whatever it is. The true the true meaning. I, I think what you're saying for for particularly fi is that the true meaning that you are looking for with FI has to be something weighty and significant and authentic. Yeah, yeah. NI does not care if yeah. that me- if that big lofty meaning is there or not. It just cares that it means whatever it means. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, that's so well put. So I, I think as in life, if you, if you take the functions in your stack, particularly at the top, to the exclusion of all others, Mm. you'll interact less with your world and you'll miss out on a lot of things where, as, as Alexis Kingsley has put it on the inferior function, where putting a little bit into your life goes a long way. So they're, they're in a balancing process as they go. Yeah. And that's, that's ultimately how I end up creating parts. And it allows me to sort of be multiple voices in my head at the same time. <laughs> love that. <laughs> and that, that was true before I started tying this to MBTI and understanding that I write in a way that is true to my stack. Not everyone does. Not everyone has to. I just happen to. Okay. Oh, thank you for watching. See you soon. Excuse me. I feel-